revelation and newness of life. And he, he's trying to remind us of who we are in Christ, but we're so clouded by the day or clouded by what the enemy's doing or clouded by whatever circumstances and situations, we don't actually hear what he's trying to say. And then we sit down and we try to go through the word and find scriptures to try and speak at the devil, to try and have victory over him, when in the end of the day, we have victory over him. We don't need to seek the victory. We have been seated in victory. I said we've been seated in victory through what Jesus has done. So why is revelation so important? Why do we need revelation? Because revelation brings clear vision. Revelation brings clear vision. Turn with me to Psalm 119, 105. We all know this scripture. I'm going to read it out of the New King James. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You see, Amber and I didn't find in the word, go to St. George. Are you hearing me? The Bible didn't say, Jesse and Amber, go to St. George. The Bible did say in Isaiah, here am I, send me. The Bible gave us an insight as to what we are to respond and how we're to respond, but it was the spoken word of God in our lives that said, Jesse and Amber, I am sending you to St. George. And you see, even though we fought it at first, when when we were asked, we said no, because our own natural mind was dictating what the Spirit of God wanted to do. You hear me? So we came out and I ministered here. And as soon as I ministered, as I was speaking and sharing revelation, I got revelation. I got revelation and God said, Son, you think you're coming here to say thanks but no thanks, but I'm just showing you how good the crop is that you're entering into. I'm giving you revelation that I am sending you. But you see, if Amber and I studied the word purely by intellect to find God's direction to come to St. George, we would never be here. We would never have come because we can study it all we want, but there's no specific word that says go to St. George. I don't even think St. George is in the Bible. I don't even think Amber is in the Bible. Jesse is, but it's the wrong Jesse. <laughs> it's J E S S E and not I E. You know how often I used to get picked on at school? My mum's over. <laughs> Why don't you just prophesy for a minute, mum? See, I thought my name was a girl's name. And I don't know how often I'd go to my mum and say, Mum, why on earth did you write my name I.E.? And what was your response, Mum? That wasn't your response. Your response was, it's a God-breathed name, Jesse. That's what you used to tell me. Mum would remind me, Jesse, it's a God-breathed name. If mum was to follow the written word by her intellect, she would have named me Jesse with an E. But my mum, God bless her, being spirit-filled, heard the spoken word of God and said, no, there is an anointing upon this boy that he is going to do things that have never been done before, that his name is going to be spelt with an IE because everyone who picks on him, all my siblings, 
are going to realise how special he is. Is that true, Mum? See? I used to get called Jesse, car. <laughs> Not even kidding. But the Spirit of the Lord is upon Jesse with an IE. That God has anointed and appointed Jesse with an IE to be a vessel of Almighty Jesus, to preach freedom to those that are lost and to preach to the captives you are set free. But you see what I'm saying here, church? We can't read the word off of pure intellect or what we think we understand because the truth is church we have to rightly divide the word of God there are things in the word of God that you you literally can't apply to your life today is this true no that was a bit worrisome there Brit it was like I want to I want to agree with him but I'm not sure eye for an eye tooth for a tooth If your left hand sins against you, cut it off. But there's even stuff of the law that can't be applied to our lives now. Because if we're to abide by the law, we're trampling what Jesus did under feet. Because we're saying it was no effect, it was no good, it didn't do it, it didn't cut it. I've got to now make my own salvation through what I can do because Jesus didn't do it right. Ha ha ha. But it was the spoken word of God that was downloaded into Amber and I and said, guys, I'm sending you to St. George. There is an anointing and an appointing upon your lives. I'm sending you there for a divine purpose and a divine reason. We can't argue with that. It was beyond our natural understanding. I said to God, why would you send Amber and I? We haven't even hit maturity yet. Why would you send us? You're sending us to a church where I'm pretty sure we're the youngest ones there. Fair call. But imagine how I felt. Lord, you want me to come and teach these people when they've got five years more life experience than me? (laughs) But you see, even when I was studying the Word and being like, God, what am I meant to do here? I couldn't bring a word to you guys through my natural intellect because I didn't have the life experience. Hello, can I speak to someone this morning? I didn't have that backing of life behind me. So me just simply reading the word through my intellect would never have cut it because you all heard it all before. What I needed to do was to get down with God and say, God, download me with something deeper So when I bring it to the people, they're actually going to take something home. It goes beyond my natural understanding. It goes beyond what I can comprehend. But God, I need, I need the spoken word. I need revelation. I need the weight of your revelation upon this word. Can I tell you something? The written word alone will not actually set people free. Did you hear me? You can, read, you can read that scripture that we just read in Luke 4. You can read it to your heart's content, but unless you receive something from it that's downloaded only by God, it's actually not going to have any effect on your life. You can sit in church right now and be nodding your head and agreeing with me like I'm on a roll, but if nothing's entering in, you're going to walk out the same. You can be a bubble dog, a bubble head, all you want. But a bubble head doesn't get revelation. 
Mum does it well. I feel the Spirit of the Lord upon Mum right now. She's just ministering right now to set people free. Can I just take a moment right now? Right now, I just want to take a moment to honour my mum and dad. Can we just honour my mum and dad? I wouldn't be here. And not, like, I'm not even like talking a natural circumstance, right? I mean, spiritually speaking, hello? I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my mum and dad. And Amber and I believe in honour. And to give honour where honour's due. And I find it such a great honour and privilege that my mum and dad are in the church that God sent me to. That even today, they're still imparting wisdom. They're still imparting wisdom. They're still imparting fruit to us. I'm going to read Psalm 119, 105 in the Passion Translation. And listen to this. The Passion Translation puts such weight on it. Listen to this, Psalm 119, 105. Truth's shining light guides me in my choices and decisions. So truth, what's truth? The Word, the Word is true and the Word is truth. It guides me in my choices and decisions. Listen to this, it goes on. The revelation of your Word makes my pathways clear. You can read the word all you want, but unless you get clear revelation on it, your direction, the choices you're going to make and how you're going to go about it will not come into your heart, into your life. You won't receive direction upon it until you receive revelation on it. You see, we can follow the word, word for word, and go about life and not actually fulfill anything that God placed in us. Did you know that? The word alone is actually not going to fulfill the purpose God's laid in us. It takes revelation. And when we operate and grasp hold of that revelation. Ephesians 1.17 says, I pray that the Father of glory, I pray this during when we're transitioning from worship, I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom, and the spirit of revelation to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. Why did Paul pray for a spirit of revelation if it wasn't needed? Because, you know, I've heard people say that we don't need revelation, that everything is contained in the word. Which there's part truth to that, isn't there? But like I said, you can read the word to your heart's content with your own understanding, with your own intellect. You could be a scholar and read the word and still miss the revelation. Has anyone ever heard of Dr. Yongi Cho? You know what he said? Dr. Yongi Cho said, the Holy Spirit doesn't talk to smart people. why I'm here (laughs) the Holy Spirit doesn't talk to smart people because even a scholar can get it wrong hey doesn't matter how smart how many degrees you got unless there's a serious revelation that comes into what you're reading it's for nothing church Why am I sharing this? Because revelation brings overflow. Revelation brings overflow. When one person gets revelation, you can't not keep it to yourself. Has anyone else had that experience? When you receive something, some sort of revelation, it's like, I can't, I've got to share this. I have to share this. How often, Dad, on the way to work in the car when I'd be reading the Word, you know my nickname? My nickname when I was in the family business, you know what my nickname was? Reverend. (laughs) My dad, my dad was confessing and prophesying over me when I was only a young fella. And now look where I am. 
because confession has power. And my dad was confessing over me, son, you are a reverend. You are going to be revered and you are going to be a reverend of the Most High God. But I would be in the car and to me as a, as a baby Christian, I'd be reading the word and I'd be asking God, give me revelation on this. And I'd be getting revelation and I'd be sharing it to dad and dad's already heard it. He's like, mate, that's awesome. That's good. And then I'd start preaching to dad saying, dad, you need to get this. This is revelation. And dad would say, Jess, I've got it. No, no, you don't understand. I feel the Spirit of the Lord upon me. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord's going to move. <laughs> Dad say, Jess, sometimes when you get revelation, it's for specific people. And it took me, <laughs> oh, the Spirit of the Lord's in this place. It took me years to understand that. But has anyone had that revelation where you're like, I just got to share it. I got to share it. This needs to be shared. This needs to be spoken. This is why when I share the word, when I preach, the reason I get excited is because it's revelation. That through the week, God's been downloading stuff to me and I haven't been, I've been bottling it up just for Sunday so you can get the hot off the press edition of the word of God that he's spoken to me. And that's why I get excited by it and I'll holler and I'll shout and I'll move and I'll run over chairs and I'll do all sorts of stuff because I just want you to receive the revelation God's showing me. And so what happens is revelation brings overflow. So as you receive that revelation, you go then and share it. Then someone else gets revelation and someone else gets revelation and someone else gets revelation and someone else gets revelation. And, gets revelation. and before you know it, the church of the living God has exploded. Guys, we can't grow the kingdom of God purely off intellect. We can't grow the kingdom purely off our own understanding of salvation. Because our understanding of salvation could be very different to someone else's. You see, when I was growing up, mum and dad didn't bring me up and say, Jess, this is how you ought to live. This is exactly what's going to happen. And as you live this way, this will be the outcome. Is that true, mum? Or did you say, Jess... This is the living God. Jesus died on the cross for you. They shared the gospel and then they allowed us to find our salvation. Is that true? Praise the Lord. There's no microphone on you right now. <laughs> My mum did use the correcting rod for me. Someone say, praise the Lord. If they didn't, if they had of, I might have been so scarred, I wouldn't be here right now. But you see, mum and dad didn't lay down my life and say, this is exactly what you have to do, Jess. If you want to be saved, this is the 10-step process. They said, Jess, this is what salvation looks like. And this is what Jesus did for us. You can have this too. Where were we on that? We're at some sort of convention. Was it a COC convention? Some fellow was sitting there preaching and he did a big altar call. There was thousands of people there. Well, it felt like thousands. Might have only been a couple of hundred. This was Bathurst. And this man of God's preaching away and, and he finishes preaching. He goes, if you want to receive Jesus, raise your hand. And I put my hand up because I was like, well, he told me to put my hand up. So I put my hand up, put my hand up and I look up. And there's heaps of other hands raised. And I look in my row and I'm the only one in my row because our family took up a row. And so I nudge dad and I go, dad, <laughs> I put my hand up. What do I do? <laughs> and dad goes, it's all right, son, we'll all go out. And so I remember so clearly, this was so such a defining moment in my life. As clear as anything, mum and dad went like, well, mate, you're on your own, you goose, off you go. <laughs> I said, no, son, we're going to go together. And so we all went out the front and we all lined up. And this man came and he, and he prayed for everyone. And he prayed over me and he prophesied over me, didn't he, mum? He said, I see a young shepherd before me and he's going to pastor the people. I was seven years old. Seven years old. And I had literally, I had initially put my hand up because I thought he told us to put a hand up. <laughs> and I, like, I was like, yeah, okay, we'll do this. This is cool. 
And then I looked up and I realized not everyone had their hand up. <laughs> um, and, but you see, God still moved upon it because my heart was still open. And I saw the way this fellow was preaching. And it probably went over my head. I probably didn't have a full grasp, hold of an understanding of what he was sharing about. But you see, we can preach the word, but it's the spirit of God that draws people. So when I'm sharing the word, my heart and my prayer is that the Spirit of God is going before me and permeating every heart that's before me. Because I can share a great theologically sound doctrine word, but if there's no life of the Spirit in it, it's not going to have any effect. Is this true? Is this okay? Everyone's all right this morning? Someone say hallelujah. And so from that, I received salvation, amen, at age seven. I received a revelation and a prophetic word that I would be a shepherd and a pastor to the people. And then I went on and I lived my life and the long and the short is I didn't always live for God. And then mum came and she used the correcting rod and got me back online with God. Can I tell you my... (laughs) Can I tell you that my mum smokes my mum ran hard for me, eh? I ran away from home. I like... I did all sorts of silly, immature things. And even so, even though I ran, my mum still ran after me. And, you know, I never understood the love of a parent until I had my own children. And I used to hate the fact how mum, I used to call mum a helicopter parent. She'd just flop and hover over everything. (laughs) But, you know, once I held Audrey in my hands, my very first daughter, she was like all of five minutes old. And I just looked at her and I said, baby girl, you can run as hard as you want from me, but I will always run you down. I will always chase after you. You have got no idea what you've just walked into. (laughs) Don't you think for a minute? No. (laughs) But it was... that, that was when I first experienced that love that a parent has for their child. And mum ran after me. Mum spoke the spoken word with the written word over my life. And it brought an overflow. Because what's happening here, right, is also a legacy from these guys. Hello? What you're witnessing here is a legacy. And revelation has overflow. Someone say revelation has overflow. Revelation has overflow. Because the more and more revelation is released, the more and more people receive it, and the more and more people then spread it. Turn with me to Ephesians 3, 17. Ephesians 3, 17. Then by constantly using your faith. What are we constantly using? Our faith, the life of Christ will be released. There's that word released. Someone say released. It's going to be released deep inside you. And the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Someone say hallelujah. There is revelation in that very scripture, church. We can read that and feel warm and fuzzy and nice inside. But when you grasp hold of the redemptive revelation of what Jesus did on the cross, his very love for me is where I rest. His very desire and passion for me is where I live my life from. The very trajectory of my life comes from the resting place I have in Christ. And the beautiful thing about resting in God, you know, the world will tell you that rest means to take a holiday. Is this true? The world will tell you to rest is to take a day off work. Do you know true rest in God can be found even when you're busy? You can be flat stick running 100 miles a minute and still just have absolute rest. There's a place in our own lives and each individually, we have to find this place of rest where we don't have to stop. The kingdom of God will still grow and expand. We'll still be used by God, but we're not striving. We're not struggling. We're not trying to force things to happen because we're in a place of rest. 
And as we're in a place of rest, it just happens. Someone say it just happens. Amber and I don't run around the town trying to grow the church. Hello. Is this okay? The Spirit of the Lord draws people here. Because Amber and I are in a constant rest. And it doesn't matter what we do, how we do it, we are in a constant rest. Now, I'm not saying for a moment the enemy doesn't try to come and steal, kill, and destroy, because that's exactly how he works. Hallelujah. He comes and he tries to plant a thought. He plants a seed. He says, just think about it. There are times when Amber and I are busy, and we've had, we've had, we have thought, this is true, my wife will attest this, we've thought, man, we need to just pull up stumps. Is this true? That has come to our mind. We need to pull up stumps, which means stop the whole show. Because the devil had come and he said, you're going to burn out if you keep this up. No, no, that can't happen. No, no, no. Just think about it. Think about what you're doing. Think about how busy you are. You will burn out. And so all of a sudden we're like, man, if we keep this up, we're going to burn out from a simple thought. But you see, in Christ, the more we rest in Him, burnout's not existent. I said burnout is not existent. It doesn't exist. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't even come to mind when you're in Christ. Because the more we're in Christ, Christ is whole, Christ is full, Christ is peace, Christ is rest, Christ is all these things. Burnout doesn't fit in Christ. And if Christ is in me and I'm in Him, then burnout can't be there. Burnout cannot be there. But we need, Amber and I needed revelation on that exact scripture. When we got the download that, you know what? Everything we do comes from a point of rest in Him. doesn't mean we have to stop what we're doing, but we can just find that place in Him where it almost feels like the whole world stops. And His peace just comes over you. But you see, we couldn't find that just through reading the Word. We needed to encounter a revelation of it. And church, right now, it's vital for us to move upon revelation. It's vital for us to grasp hold of revelation. It's vital for us to dig deep for revelation. Ephesians 1, 17 to 23, it actually says that, um, that we'll receive the full revelation of the hope that's in His calling through our deepening intimacy with Him. Church, we need to be intimate with our Father. I mean intimate. Intimate. You think of what intimacy is for a married couple. The two become one and there is an ecstatic union that takes place. That's the same union our God desires for us. That when we come before him with his word and say, Lord, just speak to me. Unagended God, I just want to hear your voice. Breathe upon these scriptures, turn these pages and show me your glory, Lord. I want to be intimate with you. I want to be intimate with you. I want to receive revelation through your word. I'm going to end with this last point and this last scripture. If you've been taking notes, write this down. That revelation brings a greater impact. Revelation brings a greater impact. So Acts chapter 10, 9 to 15, and then I'm going to read 19 to 20. Acts 10, 9 to 15. The next day around noon, as Cornelius' men were approaching Joppa, Peter went up to the flat roof of the house to pray. He was hungry and wanted to eat, but while lunch was being prepared, he fell into a trance and entered into another realm. As the heavenly realm opened up, he saw something resembling a large linen tablecloth that descended from above, being let down to earth by its four corners. As it floated down, he saw that it held many kinds of four-footed animals, reptiles, and wild birds. A voice said to him, Peter, 
go and prepare them to be eaten. Peter replied, there is no way I could do that, Lord, for I've never eaten anything forbidden or impure according to our Jewish laws. The voice spoke again, nothing is unclean if God declares it to be clean. And then in Acts 10, 19 to 20, it says, As Peter was in deep thought trying to interpret the vision, the Spirit said to him, Go downstairs now, for three men are looking for you. Don't hesitate to go with them, because I have sent them. Peter needed a revelation that what God declares clean is clean. The story actually goes on. And he enters Cornelius' house and he says to Cornelius, it's actually unlawful for a Jew to enter the house of a non-Jewish person. But my God has given me revelation that what he declares is clean is clean. So what would you have me do? Cornelius, so filled with expectation and anticipation that this man Peter would rock up, gathered his whole household That's his servants, that's his uncles, his aunts. Every person within that household was gathered together. And it actually says Peter walked in and saw a large gathering of people. And it says he started to share the gospel. And as he shared the gospel, the Holy Spirit fell upon all of Cornelius' house. And they all spoke in tongues. And then Peter said, what is stopping these people from being baptized in water? Let's get him baptized now. But you see, church, that never would have happened if Peter didn't get a revelation. Can you see the importance of revelation today, church? God has called us to live by faith through the revelation of his word. We can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God and the more we dig deep and ask for more revelation if you want to just come right now Sam we'll just get the worship team up the more we dig deep for that revelation the more we're going to get clear vision the more we're going to encounter overflow and the greater the impact that revelation is going to have upon people Father, right now, I just pray and I just release the spirit of revelation, the spirit of wisdom, Father. Lord, just come right now. You just open your hearts. Open your hearts to Him. Lift your hands right now. Just surrender to Him. Say, Lord, I want want your revelation right now. I want your revelation right now, Lord. Father, I pray that you'll come and enlighten the eyes of our imagination the eyes of our understanding flooding us Lord with you with the light of your glory until we receive the full revelation of the hope of your calling that is in us your saints Lord let that glory continue to be poured out Lord and give us more and more revelation Father that as we read your word Lord as we become deeply intimate with you Lord let us not read your word just as a mere book let us not read your word for mere words but Father let there be divine revelation that's poured into us as we read your word Lord that we not only see the written word but we hear the spoken revelated word of God Father as we just dig deep in you Lord let there be divine appointment in our lives right now Father that this is the day where divine revelation is going to be released upon every person in this place, upon every person watching online. Divine revelation is coming, that the eyes of their understanding are going to be illuminated and flooded by the glory of Almighty God. Father, I thank You right now for a greater release and a greater anointing, Father. Father, I thank You that signs, wonders and miracles are going to follow us everywhere we go, Lord. That the Great Commission tells us to make disciples and heal the sick. 
Father, I pray right now that there be a release of your healing anointing, a release of your revelation power. Father, I thank you right now that we're going to move and operate by your Spirit, Lord. Give us divine hearing to hear what the Spirit is saying, God. I thank you right now. I thank you right now, God, that we are here to have a greater impact upon this town and upon this community that can only come through the revelation of your love, your grace, and your word, Father. We thank you for it. We bless your holy name, Jesus. We bless your holy name, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you and release you to come and flood every life right now. Come and flood every life. Come and flood. Come and flood. Come and flood. Father, your word says first in the natural, then in the supernatural. God, we had we had over an inch of rain, Father. Lord, we had an, over an inch of rain, Father, in the natural. Father, right now, I want to call down the supernatural rain of God to come and flood our lives in a new and fresh way, Lord. Come and rain down upon us. Come and rain down upon us. I just see in the Spirit, like when the rain just cleans off all the, the grass and the, and, the, and the mud and the dirt as it, as it cleans off all that grit off our clothes and our body, the supernatural rain of God wants to rid us of all the rot of the world, all the rot the enemy's trying to throw upon us, every thought process, every lie that the rain of the Spirit is coming right now to flood your life, to wash you clean, to set you free. Father, I thank you right now. Lord, I thank you right now that you just move upon this Word with your Holy Spirit. Rain down upon us right now. Rain down upon us right now. Rain down upon us right now, Father. We thank you. 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 Holy Spirit, we worship you. Holy Spirit, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. You're releasing us from hurts. You're releasing us from lies, from fears, from burdens, from brokenness. You're releasing us. You're releasing us. You're releasing us, Lord. You're releasing us into a greater outpouring of your Spirit. God told me when He gave me the word release, He said, those that are released will release others. Church, there is a calling upon your life that as you are released from your hurts, burdens, and brokenness, as you're released from your sicknesses, as you're released from the lies and the fears, you are called and appointed to release others. Father, we bless you right now. Let's just stand to our feet as we just go out worshiping God. I'm going to open the altar up right now. I want to stand with you. I want to agree with you. I want to pray with you as you just open your lives and your hearts up to let the flood of heaven, as you let the rain of heaven in and flood your life. Father, we thank you. 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 Let 